Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News, also DwyerBoxingNews.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Today is July the 28th, 2013. Many fights took place yesterday, and I'm sure right now you're going through all of them, including the Andre Berto loss to Soto Carras, right, including Omar Figueroa's gut check victory, also Adlanir Salisa's victory. But as you go through the fights, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on what I consider to be the most meaningful fight of last night. It's worth a look. It's a heavyweight fight that took place between two unbeaten heavyweight prospects. Joe Hanks, whose nickname is The Future, right? And he fought Andy Ruiz. Well, I believe this fight was major on a host of levels. I did not make a pre-fight interview, excuse me, a pre-fight video, because, quite frankly, I wasn't sure who was going to win this fight. Let's talk about the folklore going in, and let's talk about my takeaway from the fight. Joe Hanks is one of those fighters who boxing insiders have followed for years, right? Hanks has sparred with multiple heavyweight champions. Chris Bird has an interview here online on YouTube where he says that Joe Hanks is a future champion. He sparred with Joe Hanks years ago. He felt that Joe Hanks just had to play out the string to win the heavyweight championship. Vladimir Klitschko needed sparring partners. He looked up Joe Hanks. Right, understand this Joe Hanks guy literally, you know, he was unbeaten going into last night, but he had literally been in the gym with A-level fighters, right? And there was a buzz about him, right? He's a tall guy, 6'4". He has power. He's usually on his front foot. He's also a chess player. He's able to literally deconstruct you from the inside out. Now, he was fighting Andy Ruiz. Now, understand Ruiz is interesting because Ruiz's personality is that of a choir boy, right? Ruiz is just not the kind of guy who walks around with a lot of swag, right? Ruiz also looks out of shape, right? If you think Adelaide Solis normally looks out of shape, just imagine what Solis would look like if he hit the buffet table a few extra times. That's what Andy Ruiz looks like, right? So when you see Ruiz, it is easy to underestimate him. But I'm here to tell you that in terms of hand speed, at the world-class level in the heavyweight division. In my opinion, there is no one with faster hand speed than Andy Ruiz. And let me also say, Andy Ruiz hits with power. He has a string of early knockouts, right? You're not talking about pity pat hand speed. You're talking about the kind of hand speed that drops opponents. Let me backtrack a little bit. David Hay, in my opinion, has great hand speed. But David Hay is what I call an ambush fighter, right? His hand speed is zero to 60 hand speed from outside your punch range. In other words, when David Hay wants, he can take a step forward and get off a very fast punch from outside the area code. Andy Ruiz is a different type of hand speed. He's a chess player. He's not an ambush fighter. In other words, Andy Ruiz is right in front of you. He's right in front of you trading punches. And my point is, while he's right in front of you trading punches, he sees it all. Right? Vision's an important thing. In other words, while the bullets are flying, 
Andy Ruiz is able to digest it all quickly. It becomes slow motion for him because he sees it all and doesn't panic. Then in response, off his counters, standing right in front of you, he's able to get off very quick, very heavy combinations. That's what he did last night to Joe Hanks. This is one of the more impressive performances I've seen. Ruiz comes out against a front foot heavy opponent. Ruiz is on his front foot. In other words, he breaks Hanks' rhythm in the first round. Ruiz figures out that he can hit Hanks with a short right hook. He goes to work, right? He's also shorter. Think about the heights of the elite heavyweights. I told you Hanks is 6'4", right? Vitaly Klitschko, uh, Vladimir Klitschko, they're both at least 6'6", right? These are the prime heavyweights out there. Andy Ruiz, at best, is 6'2". I don't care what his listed height is. At best, he's 6'2". My point to you is that that's actually a strength, not a weakness. Because as Andy Ruiz comes forward on taller men, just like when Joe Fraser came forward on taller men, the taller men have to find a way to defuse the bomb in front of them that's lower than they are. They can't throw just straight punches. They actually have to deal with the guy coming in under their chin. And understand, because Andy Ruiz sees the entire ring, because he has the vision of, let's say, a point guard, let's say Jason Kidd, you know the type of guy. He's over here. He just knows what's happening over here. Because Andy Ruiz doesn't panic, sees the ring, is two-handed, and is what I call adaptive-reactive. Taller guys with a bigger loop on their punches, with a slower reaction time, get taken apart. Just like Joe Hanks was taken apart yesterday. Right? Ruiz hits him with a diet of short right hooks. Then the coup de grace. I have a link to the knockout on my channel page. The coup de grace is when Ruiz comes in, throws a right hand, comes back with the perfect left hook. It lifts Joe Hanks off his feet. Right, Hanks hits the canvas. That's the first time when he gets back up, Ruiz is able to finish the job with a second knockdown. I know Hanks springs to his feet, after the second knockdown, understand for at least the first two seconds of that second knockdown, Joe Hanks is out. Right? It's a stunning knockout, in my opinion. It's a major arrival. Right? Andy Ruiz is a heavyweight who you need to circle in your ratings. Whoever he fights next. Vladimir Klitschko, Vitaly Klitschko, who I think is a tougher matchup, right? Alexander Povetkin, Tyson Fury, Adlanir Solis. You need to have at least some money on Andy Ruiz as part of a hedge. Don't focus on how the guy's body looks. I want you to realize this guy is very light on his feet. This guy doesn't have a peer when it comes to hand speed in the heavyweight division up close. This guy defensively is excellent. He can fight inside. He can block the punches. His punches are shorter than most heavyweights punches. His punching power is above average. Understand he has it working together. He went into the ring weighing more than 250 pounds yesterday. Understand this guy knows how to shift his weight. As you watch Hanks fall the first time, look at Andy Ruiz. He's perfectly balanced. This is not a guy swinging for the fences. This is a guy with controlled leverage, with what I call 
built-in leverage, and he's slick. Understand, apart from the knockout, he was outboxing Joe Hanks. Right, Andy Ruiz doesn't need to knock you out to beat you, right? And so this guy, there are very few guys, in my opinion, who have a shot at being heavyweight champion, right? The guys I've just named, the Klitschko brothers, Adlanir Solis, Pavetkin, obviously, is a champion, uh, David Hay, and keep in mind, David Hay has been a champion in the past, Right, those guys to me, Tyson Fury, those guys to me have a realistic chance to be heavyweight champion or are already heavyweight champion. To that very short list, right, I'll throw in Brian Jennings. Right, in my opinion, the jury is still out on Deontay Wilder. I'll throw in Tony Thompson. I'm sorry, David Price. You're not on this list. Who is? Is Andy Ruiz. Why? Kubat Pulev? I'll have to watch a little bit more. But let's just say, it's clear to me that of all the guys on the list I have just named, understand that Andy Ruiz, in my opinion, functionally, has the fastest hand speed, right? And because this guy knows how to defend himself, because this guy knows how to fight in close, because this guy is well balanced, because this guy is a slick boxer, I believe he would have a chance against any of them. Let me say, he picked up a minor belt yesterday, some intercontinental belt and what have you. So he's going to be having much more high-profile fights. But understand, the guy he beat yesterday, Joe Hanks, is world-class. Doesn't belong on this list, at least not yet, but he's world-class. And just understand, the only thing, in my opinion, that Andy Ruiz is missing today is exposure. I hope you give him a look. I would take Andy Ruiz over Steve Cunningham, uh, Tomas Ademic, many of the heavyweights hovering around world-class level, right? If you haven't heard the name, I just want you to Google him and look at his fights. And also understand, too, I'm not here talking weightlifting right? Doesn't matter to me really what a guy's body looks like. People know that I'm a big supporter of Adlanir Solis. I think he's one of the most talented heavyweights out there, right? In my opinion, a heavyweight can have some flab and can still be a great heavyweight, right? Um, go back to the 60s, look up Buster Mathis, pretty good heavyweight. Look at big George Foreman when he came back, right? Pretty good heavyweight, great jab. Andy Ruiz weighs more than 250 pounds. Andy Ruiz has some body fat on him. If this is a weightlifting contest, a body beautiful contest, Andy Ruiz loses badly. But let me just tell you, his physique is actually an advantage in the ring. Because, just like Joe Hanks yesterday, a lot of opponents come in the ring and simply cannot understand that this guy has faster hand speed than they do. This guy's a slicker boxer than they are. This guy hits harder than they do. Look at the combination that drops Joe Hanks the first time last night. Look at how fast Andy Ruiz gets that left hook out there. Folks, it's accurate. Folks, it's heavy. Joe Hanks hits the canvas off of it. I'm just telling you that most heavyweights wouldn't be able to block that punch. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Just remember the name. 
He's a Mexican heavyweight. Andy Ruiz. Thanks for stopping by.